Hello, my name is John and this is my response to the videos I've seen. Forgive me for the quality of this. I had to go to my phone because I was having trouble on my computer getting my camera to come back up. Sorry, just trying to see where exactly the camera's hitting my eyes. I was told I should look into the camera. So, the strong impression I got from listening to the other videos is the strength of culture. I'm sure before these videos, we could all say that there are there is a cultural component regarding the foods that everyone eats around the world. And this was um, very much so in the videos that were viewed. It seems to be an emotional attachment that comes with being raised in a culture with specific foods that people who move to the United States carry with them. That's, I guess, tied to them heart-wise. That's something that they cling to for justifiable reasons that really means something to them besides just filling yourself with nourishment and adding calories so that you can get through the day. With that in mind, as a dietitian, nutritionist, registered dietitian, we should remain sensitive and cognizant regarding how we approach individuals when giving them dietary advice if they're of a different culture. This is especially so, I'm sorry, I forgot who, but uh, when Adna and someone else was talking about individuals who are from Mexico and describing their food and their experiences in terms of what people perceive their foods and their culture to be, especially here in the United States, and what they actually are. And someone mentioned how um, someone's father was told to not eat beans and rice. That's a very intricate and emotional part of their culture. That's something they grew up with. And to simply say offhandedly, get rid of beans and rice, that's something that's very sensitive and if you don't explain perhaps why that's important, as she mentioned, you leave the individual dis discouraged with seeking professional help regarding dieting and their health. It's kind of like, I guess, use my own example, even though I'm not a fan of soul food, don't really get into it. It's like telling a black person from the South, you need to give up soul food and leave it there and just move on without really discussing the hows and the whys and just assuming that they would just take your advice as gospel and just start to remove something, a food that's a very intricate part of their life. As health professionals, we're gonna to have to be sensitive to such cultural considerations, seeing that we have a large immigrant population of people who continuously move in to this country and we should be aware of such cultural sensitivities. The individual I mentioned in my presentation, she's from the Congo and she has a relatively healthy diet and in terms of whole foods, but some may disagree and may push them towards processed foods because the processed foods may be plant-based, but she may be just getting along just as well with the whole foods-based diet that she's currently eating. So I guess that's it. I'm, like I said, my apologies again for this not being as perhaps a better quality because I had to resort to my phone. Thank you.